Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Final Fantasy Prefects' video. And we have Galoof, we have Elena, and we also have Dorgan as a review topic for today's video, Final Fantasy V. So, Galoof first. Galoof is being a new version Awakened. I've used him quite a bit, so I can give out a pretty good assessment of this guy, especially. So, infinite turns, that's actually very good. Uh, if he didn't have infinite turns, he, he would... Well, we'd probably be talking about a different story here. He has tri and I normally don't mention this because most units do have triple cast, but now he has triple cast, so... Because he didn't have it before, so it's quite good for him to have triple cast now. 3k HP and also 500 flat attack. Passive. 500% cap. He has this on both sides, by the way. 500% uh, cap and also 200% defense true shield build. In the brave shift form, or he only has in... I'm pretty sure he has both both sides of that. But uh, in the Brave Shift form, he has 600% cap. Very good. 100% true, true wield. 150% little burst damage passive. 200% attack passive. I just want to mention that so that it's easy to cap his attack. 500, 1,000 of flat attack so he doesn't have on both sides. So the top part is for the base form. I didn't label it for some reason. I'm stupid. Anyways, 200% plant killer. 150% beast killer. Now, what's really good about these uh, really obscure killers that really weren't really that relevant on the GP version might be a lot better on the global version because Clash of Wolves bosses are all these obscure races that are really hard to gear for. So, why not actually start biting Alum in the butt? Because all these there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of units that are coming out with like really obscure killers that almost never see the light of day. But it might actually be very useful in the future. So, I mean, yeah, plant killer. And beast killer, eight times mod. This is where his power power comes from. And on one of his cooldowns, he has an eight times mod to buff up his LB for five turns. He also has 30 uh, LB fill for allies for one use. And his rave shift to lump burst. Here's the big hitter. Keep in mind, it's an eight times mod boost. Like I mentioned right there, 24 hits. 150 times mod with 80 times. And also 100% plant and beast killer buff. Very good. So there has to also be cons. And the the thing is that he's a lot weaker because on the for five turns after his, after the initial five turns of his cooldown or six turns, uh, he's weak. He's pretty much you know and, you know not very strong for the rest of those turns until the cool cooldown comes back. Until that cool cooldown comes back, he's just like kind of whatever now. And the biggest problem with him is that his Brave Shift from Little Burst has a slightly odd frames. It's, it is 24 hits. It should chain with every, a lot of people that have 24 hits, but for some reason it doesn't. So you have to kind of just use it first or, you know, depending on your emulator or uh, device, you might have to use it first, might have to use it second, but most times you're going to be using it first and then the other one. So you'll get used to it. I did. Eventually you'll get, you'll get, used, you'll, you'll get used to it. So. Even before you ask, and I don't think a lot of people can do this, uh, you can't, you cannot do entrust in his triple cast. Uh, I was already asked when his JP version, when he came out on the JP version, so no, you cannot do that still. Sadly, that'd be really insane. I'm gonna go 8.5 because he does have a lot of other things that I didn't, I didn't mention, including imbues, uh, imperils, and stuff like that. So he has a lot of other things he can be doing. On top of it, in his base form, he's not just a damage dealer in his brave shift form. In fact, I. After the Gilgamesh fight, I pretty much always use him as, a, as in his base form because he has that uh, he has those imperils and imbues and stuff. So, eight point five for Gloof, probably one of the best New Vision Awakens in the game for sure. We have Summoner Lenny here, who I also have a lot of a lot of experience with, so I can give out some insight on that. And for both sides, she has infinite turns. She has six hundred percent cap, one hundred percent matter, two to wield. 200% low burst damage and also 200% magic passive, very good. Uh, the magic true duel probably won't be as big of a deal on the global version because you can get that a lot easier. In the base form, 60% evil mag uh, damage, 100% evil magic. She has the auto cast for e evil gosh generation per turn, so I mean that's pretty good. In the, in the base LB, not a one hitter. 20, 24 hit 70 times fire evoke damage 100% auto revive for all allies and 50% fire resist for everybody and keep in mind for everyone 
I just want to mention that again. For everyone. So, not very useful. <laughs> I'm gonna go come out right and say it. Not very useful. Uh, and the Brave Shift form is what is the form that I use the most. 130% win in peril on a normal ability. 85% breaks on a normal ability as well. 200% Beast and also 150% plant killer. And the Brave Ships Lump Burst can be imbued because it's magic asterisk damage. 24 hits. 100 times. Pretty good. 86% breaks. And also 140% wind and peril. Very good. Very good. So I've used I've used her a whole lot. And dark visions and stuff, so she's very good for that. We'll be getting to that very shortly. And uh, her cons, her evil magic is very low, so just... And her base LB, uh, it aids the enemy, pretty much. I didn't put a space there for some reason, but... Uh, her, her LB is fire, but it gives fire resistance, so it's just like... You're not using her base form at all. You're literally never going to use her base form. You would, you would, you would, shi you would start uh, the battle with her in her shift form. <laughs> I almost never use her base form for anything. It's just not really that useful. So her brave shift form is where it's at. Unfortunately, in terms of score, it's going to lower down because of her base form not being not being very good. I'm trying to talk so fast. So I'm just so passionate because this unit I've used a lot. So I'm going to go eight because her base her brave shift form is quite good and very useful, and I think it'll be useful. It's it's her, I know it's useful in dark visions already. She can be f fitted on pretty much any team. Especially win teams, of course. And what drags down the score from being an 8.5 or even a 9 is that her brave base form it will literally never be used. If you defend her base form, it's basically copium. You're, you're doing a copium on that part. Because I have a lot of experience with this unit already. And I just don't think it's very good. So if you want to defend the base form, please let me know in the comment section down below. It's not good though. I promise you. You'll look on the wiki later and you're like, oh, he was right. This is, this is trash. Uh, I'll just use the brave shift form. So, E out of ten for Lena. She's she's quite good though. And someone who I don't have any experience with because he's just a, a, a lightning damage dealer. So it really isn't anything needing much experience with. So he can, he can and trust very good. Lightning and wind a moe chaining decent. Two hundred percent TD each. Five hundred percent cap pretty standard. Two hundred percent attack passive pretty good. 20% LB damage, pretty good. A little 50% more than Tyvus, but he's a chainer, not a finisher. 200% um, plant killer, 150% beast killer, pretty, you know, it's just like all the other ones, they got in the same killers. And the LB is 24 hit, 150 times mod a lightning damage, 25% lightning amp, 150% low burst damage buff. And the SLB, of course, will be a lot stronger. 130% lightning in peril. 100, or 35% lightning amp, 100% beast and plant killer, and a 300 times mod lightning damage, 24 hits. So there really is a reason why you don't talk about him, you don't really see videos about him, is just because he's just another, you know, another damage dealer. And 24 hit chain is going to be kind of out, outside of the norm, actually, because the 27 hitters are going to start coming into the game, and those are being way better than this, than this guy. So, stuck... To lightning damage because you're really only using his LBs. Uh, the the wind chaining is kind of a copium thing, and just another damage dealer, another SLB damage dealer. There's nothing really special about him, other than if you like the character, I guess. Uh, they're really oh, there's it's just not there's nothing special about him. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him a seven, seven out of ten, which is. I mean, he, he can do he can do damage. He's not like he's terrible or anything. It's just he, there's nothing significant about him. He's not doing anything really that interesting to me. So, would he be good in in dark visions? Of course. As, as in the lightning stages, of course, he'd be probably be best in slot if you have another twenty four hitter. Um, Clash of Wills kind of iffy because he's basically locked to lightning. So it's just kind of an iffy type of thing there. So seven for him. Is this banner worth pulling on? If you are a diehard Final Fantasy V fan, of course. I mean, you're going to pull anyways. If you are someone who is free to play and you are like biting down on your hand because uh, you don't have a lot of resources, uh, just skip. 
This is pretty much a skip banner. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking and most of you guys are probably going to agree with that. So anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate you. And hope to see you in the next video. Peace.